Good morning and welcome to my hobby bench on this 31st day of July. Yes, summer is coming to a close. Um, today's video is going to be another episode of Engine Talk. This will be episode one, or episode four, pardon me. And I believe for many, many years I did what was called a quick look video series. I think the quick look is completely dead now. I think it's time to revamp that. And now, from now on, instead of quick looks or look inside, maybe look inside, I don't know. But quick look for sure is gone, and we're on to Engine Talk episodes. That's the new name for these videos where I just show and tell and talk about the engines, their history, construction, and anything else I can add to that discussion. So today's video is um, regarding a box of engines that could have also been titled a mystery box sent to me by a friend named Brad, a new friend who's been trying to contact me for many months. And we had a discussion on the phone and he wanted to send me some engines to evaluate and or run if possible. So before I show you, before I throw it to the table and show you these engines, I just want to pop up this little disclaimer uh, regarding these engines. So now that you've read the disclaimer, let's go straight to the table. Okay, so here on the table I've got the box, or the engines that came in the box that Brad sent to me. And as you can quickly see, there are two YS91AC engines here. I've got two HPs and a Webra. And what I think I want to do is just kind of, you've seen them, I'm just going to kind of move them off to the side and we will talk about these things individually and of course I got a couple of exhausts. This exhaust goes with this Weber engine which is kind of interesting because I just received this exact engine from uh, a subscriber friend in Germany that was completely rebuilt and of course you can go look at that. This is a Weber 40 Blackhead as far as I know what their title and this is exactly like the one that I got it even had the same type of carb and everything so this one came to me just like this I haven't done anything with that and if you recall from the disclaimer I am not commissioned to uh, work on these engines I have I haven't been hired to service any of these engines so I will do the best I can to see if I can get them running with minimal effort because I'm not going to go do disassemblies of these things without the express permission and contract from the owner of the engines. And one of the reasons is because I have so many other engines, customer engines right now that I'm working on that I really just don't have the time to just even screw around with my own engines, let alone somebody else's. So anyway, so this looks like it, I mean, it's got really good compression. It's a little tight. I could probably heat it up and oil it and of course this carb is is a little snug so I mean this is a, this is going to be an easy one quick quick little oil job heat it up and that'll be fine to run it's an, in addition to the other one I've already got now this is the exhaust for it and it's got tape on it because it's got the two screws for the exhaust there so this engine dates back to 1971 best I can find on any review and People that have commented on the video that I posted said they just love this engine and I don't think I've ever had or run a Blackhead um, Webra 40 so that's really nice. So let's move that one off to the side and let's talk about these two HP engines. And maybe I'll zoom in just a hair more here now. So I've got these two HP engines. They're both HP 40s. One is obviously the Gold Cup series and one I don't know if there's, it looks kind of like a speed. I mean, the construction of it, I mean, they both look like Weber speed engines. But I don't know if that's what this 40 was called. I haven't looked it up on the, uh, on the engine review site to see. But I mean, I don't see that there would be much of a difference in performance between these two engines. I don't know for sure. I mean, to me, externally, they look almost identical. Now, is there porting differences? Possibly. This one's cooling head is a little bit thinner than this one. And of course it's not, <clears throat> excuse me, doesn't have the fins cut into it. But other than that, the carbs look identical. The 
drive washer looks identical. The construction is two-piece construction, like FSR type construction. So I mean, these engines look, for all intents and purposes, look identical to me, and they were supplied with this type of exhaust uh, to run them. Now, I had, in the past, I had one of these exact exhausts. Um, and I thought it was just cool looking. In fact, I'd have to, I don't even know that I have a video titled that shows what the exhaust or what the engine was. You just have to be lucky to find it. I would even have to be lucky to go back and find what engine I ran this exhaust on. But it had a very unique exhaust note and they're kind of cool looking exhaust. I think it's a Max, but I'm not entirely sure. So that is the deal with these two HP engines. Both made in Austria. Uh, Probably both have good part support from Mikoa because Mikoa has the rights to those engines now. So the final engines we're going to talk about today are probably the ones that are going to take a little bit longer to discuss. And I've got two YS uh, F91AC engines. These are the air chamber engines. And they both look like they're in pretty decent shape. Obviously this one is missing. You know, the prop washer and nut, this one has that. This one turns over, but it doesn't really have much compression at all. I mean, for a YS engine, you might as well say that has no compression. Um, so I don't know how much runtime these things have on them. And I don't recall if Brad told me much about these things. I do know that this one has a stuck exhaust valve. And I can't recall if Brad actually told me that he tried heating this up to see if that exhaust valve would just pop back up. Because that's, that's what I would do. I would put a lot of oil in there and then just heat, heat that up heavily and see if that exhaust valve just pops up. But obviously this isn't going to have any compression whatsoever. And this one is in a much, much worse condition. Some of the, the screws here are completely wallered out. At least that one is. So getting that off to disassemble this engine is, is just rough. This has some kind of oil residue on it. So, I mean, this one, as far as I'm concerned, is probably not going to be a runner at all. Now, if I can put some oil, and it does have a, a valve cover. It's in the bag. If I can maybe just get some oil in this engine and see if I can get the compression up, this one can be a runner. But as I, oof, wow, I don't like the looks of that at all. Look at this. That, and what I'm looking at is this. That high speed needle, let me move my finger out of the way, looks seriously bent. Wow. That is really, really bent. So I don't know. I don't know what's, ugh, I don't know what's gonna happen with this. That. So I don't know. I don't know. I ha don't right now. I don't have good feelings that either of these engines is going to be run because, like I said, I'm not commissioned to service them, and I certainly don't have the time to just sit here and play with them. And YS engines are considerably more challenging to work on, and they're certainly more expensive to work on. Finding any replacement parts is getting hard to do. And anytime you dis disassemble a YS engine, you automatically better have a gasket set on hand because if you don't, it won't seal properly because with these, the way these are designed, at least the ones that I've had before, it's critical that the valve cover is sealed because that's part of how it provides, yeah, part of how it provides uh, the pressure to the engine. So one of the questions that Brad asked me, I think, when we were texting back and forth was, he had heard, I've read, I've heard, you know, people saying, and I think maybe even YS advertised this at one time, saying supercharged engines. And he, he asked me, are these truly supercharged engines? And being not being a high performance car or airplane mechanic or engine mechanic, I would say off the top of my head, I would say no. <clears throat> because I don't know a whole lot about supercharging. So I was on my walk today, this morning, and I was just asking my phone. I was asking Siri a series of questions about superchargers. And 
what's required to be a supercharger, components, what does it do, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I had a general idea what a supercharger was, but I wanted to see what the internet, or at least Siri, said about that. So I'm gonna post, right now, I'm gonna just put those images, I did screenshots of her answers up on the screen, and then we'll revisit that after you've had a moment to read those. So those were the thing, and I don't remember my exact questions. You'll have to just deduce what my questions were by the answers. But so the question is, I guess, supercharging is just compression of intake, compression of air going into a combustion chamber to more efficiently combust the fuel I guess that's about the best way I could just throw it down. Now, there are different ways to supercharge an engine, and most of them, it would appear from series responses, require some sort of a pump or a spinning mechanism. These obviously just have an air chamber. I don't think there's any moving parts in this air chamber, but somehow maybe there's some... some uh, I, I can't remember if I've opened one of these things up before. I might have. I, I might have. There might be some louvers or something in there that would tend to move air in a direction, or force air in a direction that would tend to compress it because these are pressurized fuel systems that operate on. They've got fuel re or regulators. So I mean, maybe that could be somehow called a supercharged engine. All I know is that it's more like a pressure-fed fuel system, a high-pressure high fuel system. And they seem to work really well, but I mean, I've never had any luck, and nor do I ever have any desire to own a used YS engine, because every time I've ever seen a used YS engine, and this also fits this bill, is that they need work. And like I said before, parts for YS engines are hard to come by. If you can find them, they're expensive, and you better have gaskets on hand. And now that this needle valve here on the one engine looked is bent, I mean, it's, it's very bent. Uh, this one's straight and at least, wow. I mean, I don't know. Jeez. These things are just in my, right at this moment, they are not in a runnable state. And I really just don't have any idea when I'm gonna have the time or desire to mess with trying to get these in a running state. This one I thought would be easy to do, but I would have to remove this high-speed needle from this and swap it with this one. And I just don't know if, I'm not commissioned to work on these engines, and I don't know if Brad wants me to do that. And even if he does, you know, we gotta set up a contract and and then I'll, I'll put them in line because like I said, I've got a lineup of engines, customer engines to work on. So anyway, that's my, Engine Talk episode number four. Bunch of bunch of engines to look at, evaluate, and hopefully get on the stand. Thank you for watching.